You're watching the latest edition of the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Dr. George Duello. Dr. Duello is the founder of Periodontics Limited in St. Louis, Missouri. We've invited him on the program today to discuss who's a candidate for dental implants. Dr. Duello, welcome to the program. Randy, it's nice to be here. Thank you. All right, now before we get into today's topic, tell us a little bit about your practice. Well, I uh, have been in St. Louis since 1983. I've been a dentist since 1979. I'm in private practice, in uh, practice of periodontics. And uh, yeah, what is a periodontist? A periodontist? A periodontist is a dentist who has uh, gone back to graduate school, usually specialized in bone and wound healing, and primarily helping people save their teeth. And that's what I started out with, but I also had an interest in dental implants early in my career as a periodontist. Is that pretty much all you do at your practice, dental right. implants? Right now, I would say that's about 85% of my practice is dental implants and helping people restore their smiles and or replace teeth with dental implants. Now you're a, a known expert worldwide. You're a teacher, lecturer, is that right? Tell me about that, with Nobel BioCare in particular. Yes, I, I have had a wonderful opportunity to share my knowledge with my fellow colleagues and uh, travel throughout the United States and, and Canada to teach about dental implants and how their practices would be beneficial to offer those services to their patients and I teach some of the technical aspects of actually doing dental implants. How long have dental implants been around? Dental implants have been around for about 50 years. Okay. in various forms. But today we are in the current state where we now have the ability to do conservative treatments, make them look better than ever. We have newer materials that are more cosmetic and more forgiving to the patient as well as their, their bone and their gum tissues. So the evolution of dental implants has taken 50 years, but now the state of the art really allows us to give people the optimum result for their health, their comfort, their appearance, and do it in a very safe and conservative manner. Now, you use a, a CT scan. In fact, it says you were the, the first ICAT CT person to have. A, t tell us about that. Well, today in dental offices, we actually can have machines instead of having to send you to a hospital. We have smaller machines that take less radiation, can give us instant information as to whether you're a candidate for dental implants. It also helps us in the treatment to do the surgery where we now know in advance what the bone looks like so we don't have to do surgical voyeurism with our patients and tell a patient. What does that mean, surgical voyeurism? Well, uh, many times a doctor will say, well, we have to do the surgery and open you up and find out what's there. It's kind of like uh, cutting into the pie to find out how well it tastes. Is that right? Yeah, but now... Is that being done, though, today? Oh, it's, it's still done, and it's still necessary in certain cases, but with the advent of CT technology and computer software, we now actually can do a surgery on the patient before we ever do it in the mouth. And it's kind of like a video game for a surgeon. Wow. So it's a, it's a wonderful tool and it gives the surgeon confidence. It also gives the patient confidence because they know we know what we know before we go in. Another new thing in dental implants is now we have the ability to put a tooth on the implant that day, or in some cases actually ho hook a whole set of teeth, a denture, onto the implants the same day. How soon can they eat after something like that? Well, we tell them they have to be comfortable and they have to use common sense, but soft diets, pastas, scrambled eggs, things that are not hard to chew. We don't want them chewing a steak, obviously, or peanut brittle, something like that, okay. because it has to heal. Just like you put a cast on your arm, that has to heal over a period of time. And we know in about two months, they can probably start chewing normal food again. But the good news is, they're never going to be without teeth. So their appearance doesn't change. And in one day, is that right? They in, go in? in? In one day, that's a very common How new scenario. is that? How new is that? It's a relatively new phenomena. Probably within the last two to three years, the science and the technology has caught up with this phenomena of teeth in an hour, teeth in a day. Yeah. That, is that what they're talking about when I see things like that? Yes, that's, yes. that's commonly what you're, you're talking about, is being able to, in some cases, actually take a patient's teeth out and put the implants in and put an immediate denture or tooth on the implant the same day. That is a tremendous service for patients who in the past had to wait three, four, five, six months for the same thing to be achieved. Is this what you're teaching other dentists? This is a big part of what we're teaching other dentists today because uh, again, this is what the public is looking for. If you look at most universities in our country, they're all teaching minimally invasive surgical techniques. What they're trying to do is rehabilitate patients as quickly as possible and get them back to life. Get so them less back downtime when you say? Trem okay. Tremendous improvement in downtime and in discomfort. That's what It seems very painful though when I think of dental implants, well, procedure. 
surprisingly it's not. And the reason it's not, bone does not have a lot of nerves in it like skin does and other tissues. So we don't really have that amount of discomfort and that's something It's not that, something they complain about. It's something they're nervous about. Is that their number one fear? It's the one pain? of it's one of their fears. And with modern techniques of sedation and local anesthetic, we can relax a patient. But what they're okay. more worried about is when we start the procedure, are they going to feel something? And I tell patients, because I've been a periodontist a long time, that most of the time they're going to have less discomfort with doing a dental implant than they have with some of the other procedures I've done as a periodontist. And that's comforting to me as a yeah. surgeon to know that myself. But once a patient has gone through the experience and have realized that they didn't have that much discomfort and they're surprised how little medication they take, it, it reinforces that comfort level that we want to give them through the procedure. You say the dental implant patient is probably the happiest group of patients in all dentistry. Absolutely. You believe that? I, I, yes, 100%. Why? Because they are so debilitated when they come in. Uh, most patients' worst fear is they're going to break a front tooth and they're going to not be able to smile. Or in some cases, a patient who can't wear a denture now is worried about can I ever be whole again? Can I ever chew the foods I want to chew again? Uh, not have my dentures fall out when I'm in public or at a party. So when you give that patient back that confidence or tell them you're never going to be without a tooth, nobody's going to know, they just like wake up all of a sudden. And I've actually seen introverts go to extroverts. They change, their personality changes. Yes. Just because of their teeth. Yes, and there's just been recent studies in the Journal of the American Dental Association highlighting this phenomena, how the psychology of the smile and people's appearance, and there's two things that people look at, their teeth and their hair. Now, that doesn't work for me. All right. It doesn't work, but for other people, their smile is a very important part of their personality, and when you restore their smile, you restore their personality. Please, let's talk about the different categories of dental implant patients. The Categories range, surprisingly, pretty wide from very young adults who are missing teeth as children and then now are adults and need their teeth replaced. Okay. And then there's the elderly patient who's been missing their teeth for a long period of time, been wearing dentures, doesn't know their solutions out there. And then in the middle, we have people who have teeth or they're about ready to lose their teeth due to various dental problems. And in some cases, unfortunately, we have people who are in accidents and injuries and they lose their teeth dramatically and they need to have dental implants. Okay, let's start with the, with the single tooth. Why, what does traditional dentistry offer and why a dental implant? What's the case for dental implant? Well, my grandfather was a dentist and in his era, he really only had a couple choices. He could make it something removable that came in and out or he could prepare or cut down a tooth and then put a cap on top of the tooth or a bridge to span a space and replace the tooth. So for many years in dentistry, that was very traditional, very well accepted as part of and the treatment. And that's what still goes on today? It still goes on in today. In what, 70% of the cases? In a, in a, high, ma in a high majority More of the cases. More than case. that, probably? Uh, I'd, Nationwide? I'd, I'd say 70 to 80% of okay. dentists are still offering those services, and they're good services. I don't want to imply that they're not good services. Just dental implants are a little better in your opinion. Well. If you believe in doing minimally invasive and doing what's necessary, then I think dental implants are the option. Because when you do a traditional procedure to replace one tooth, you're going to have to do something maybe to a natural tooth that's perfectly healthy. And anytime you mean you, the surrounding teeth? The surrounding okay. teeth. The surrounding teeth, unfortunately, have to be altered or prepared, which means you have to cut them, cut down a perfectly good tooth to restore a natural tooth. Now, in some cases that's desirable because the tooth doesn't look good, so you make it better. But if you don't and you have natural teeth, then we can put an implant. It doesn't harm the natural teeth. An implant is very conservative because implants don't get tooth decay. Is it like getting their tooth back? It's, in a way? It's exactly like getting her tooth back. What the implant really is is an artificial tooth root made of titanium. Right. And titanium doesn't get tooth decay. Do they it? fall out? No. Actually, dental implants are highly successful. My personal success rate over 25 years has been 98 percent. Okay. And that's supported by most of the literature that we read is that you should have success rates above 95 percent. So for most patients, the implant itself is a lifetime replacement. Any other misinformation out there about dental implants or uh, what are the frequently asked questions? I mean, patients go to you and they're considering dental implants. What do they want to know? And what are their fears, I guess? We've well, sometimes patients are told they're experimental. That's 
Not true. Is that right? Okay. No, they've been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. They've had many studies done over many years with all types of replacements of implants that have shown very high success rates over a long period of time. Uh, many times the patients are told they're expensive and actually the studies show that when you compare it to conventional dentistry with the complications that concur with conventional dentistry, an implant is actually cheaper over the lifetime of the patient.